Good morning. Welcome to St. John Youths. Please stand as you are able and join in singing our opening hymn, number 499, Bright as the Sun, Fair as the Moon. Bright as the sun, fair as the moon, she reigns who held within her womb the word made flesh, God's son made us to. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And so today we celebrate the solemnity of the Annunciation of the Lord. Normally, of course, it would be on the 25th, but today, or this year, it was moved to today, uh, this we have just completed the octave of Easter. So, uh, obviously, on those days, we celebrate Easter Sunday uh, in such a beautiful and special way. Um, today, uh, we're just mindful that the Lord did come to uh, Mary, and she said yes. So, even though she didn't quite understand everything that was going on, uh, she said yes to the Lord. And so, because she says yes, uh, Jesus came to be. Uh, he took, the Son of God took flesh, and so we too are called to say yes to the Lord always. For the times that we've fallen short and that we've said no or that we've hidden from God from this call that he has for us, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do to my Father my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
God, who willed that your word should take on the reality of human flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary, grant, we pray, that we who confess our Redeemer to be God and man may merit to become partakers even in his divine nature, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, it is not enough for you to weary people. Must you also weary, my God? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall be with a child and bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel which means God is with us. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm, the response is, Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Sacrifice or oblation you wish not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Holocaust or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, behold, I come. In the written scroll, it is prescribed for me to do your will. O oh, my God is my delight and your law is within my heart. I announce your justice in the vast assembly. I do not restrain my lips as you, O oh Lord, know. Your justice I kept not hid within my heart. Your faithfulness and your salvation I have spoken of. I have made no secret of your kindness and your truth in the vast assembly. A second reading, a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, it is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats take away sins. For this reason, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocaust and sin offerings, you took no delight. Then I said, As is written of me in the scroll, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. First he says, sacrifices and offerings, holocaust and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, behold, 
I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second, but this will we had been consecrated through the offering of the body of, Christ, of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. We hear a lot in the readings today about the Lord's will. We heard in the letter of letter to the Hebrews about the will of God. It's not the sacrifice that the Lord takes delight in, but it's doing the will of God. And then here, Mary, in the Gospel of Luke, just now, she says, Behold, let it be done unto me. Let it be done unto me. So God's plan, God's will for salvation history, God's will specifically for our Blessed Mother Mary, it it didn't just become happenstance. No, it was already prepared. Mary was and is the Immaculate Conception. She was conceived without sin. God had already been preparing her from her conception to say yes. But still, she had to give her fiat. She had to say yes. She had to align her will with the Father's will. They were already perfectly aligned, but she had to participate. 
the church fathers, I believe it's St. Irenaeus, but many of the fathers, Hilary, Augustine, Irenaeus, again and again they say that God became man so that man might become God. That sounds like a heresy, and sometimes it's difficult to hear that. Someone once said, Father, when you kind of talk like that, it makes my stomach a little uneasy. And it should. It's not saying that we will become God in terms of our nature. No, God is God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Trinity that does not change. However, in Christ, Christ took on our humanity. The Son of God descended into our world and through Mary, through her participation, by her saying yes, God took on, the Son of God took on our flesh, our humanity, and they became one. So in Christ, our humanity, our flesh, we are, as we say yes, we begin participating in the life of God. That's what's happening first and foremost in such a beautiful, special way in our baptism. It's not our yes if we were baptized as a child, as a baby. It's our parents, but others are saying yes for us, and we continue growing in wisdom and in grace. We continue growing and participating in the life of God, especially through the sacraments, through the Eucharist, through confirmation. But we continue growing and participating in the life of God, in the way that we live, the way that we continue to say yes to God each day. So we heard in Hebrews as well about how he was consecrated. He was consecrated. In his humanity, Jesus was consecrated. And we, in our humanity, we are consecrated to Christ, to the life of God, and we participate. So we continue saying yes, just like Mary says yes. We don't understand what that means. How could this be? I have no idea what this is going to be. What do you mean? Where are you leading me? We may have questions, but the questions could only invite, if if our attitude is correct, those questions invite a growing participation. I don't know where you're leading me, but here I am, Lord. I've come to do your will. And every time we say that, the, the word takes flesh, becomes flesh within us. We're participating in divine life. Nothing is impossible for God. That's what the angel Gabriel says. We also hear from Zechariah a different, he says the same thing. He says, how can this be? Don't you know my wife, Elizabeth, is barren? How can this be? This is basically saying it's impossible. I don't believe. And so if we have that attitude with God, then nothing can be. We're rejecting. We're not participating. We're not participating. But if we say yes, even if we don't understand, and it's better that we don't understand, yes, here I am, Lord, I've come to do your will, that's the kind of sacrifice that Jesus is looking for with each of us. We're moving into the Easter season now, the Easter octave has concluded, but actually the 25th, I misspoke earlier, it was during Holy Week. It was Monday of Holy Week. But Holy Week, the celebration of Easter, all of this is only possible because Mary said yes. Salvation could only move forward. Jesus could only come into this world so that he could minister, that he could heal, that he could teach, that he could go to the cross that he could offer himself for our salvation, that he could resurrect from the dead, that he could give us new life in the Spirit. All of that's only possible because Mary said yes. So imagine what God wants to do through each of us if only we participate in his plan, if we only participate in his life. If Mary says, oh, no, no, it can't be me. I'm just a small, humble, humble, young little Jewish girl. It can't be me. You must have... I think you got the wrong person. You meant next door. I'm sorry. I'm busy for the rest of my life. I think we would all be missing out quite a bit. That's putting it in uh, a small way. 
What does God want to do through each of us? If we say yes, the temptation, oh, no, no, God, not now. Give me another week, maybe next year. Then I'll really give my life to you. No. We surrender. Here I am, Lord. I've come to do your will. Invite us to all stand for the creed. And at the words of the incarnation, when we would normally bow, I invite us to kneel. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the power of the, in, by the, power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And in confidence with God's love for each of us, we offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For the church that she may be in our age and in every age, the virgin made fruitful by God's power and his gracious word, especially in the souls of those who are soon to be reborn in baptism. We pray. For the conversion of all who have turned away from the path of peace, that Mary, queen of peace, who built her life on God's justice, may soften our hearts and change our ways, we pray. That with Mary we may offer our consent to every initiative of the Lord, seeking to do his will in all circumstances as his humble and obedient servants, we pray. For the poor, the sick, the imprisoned, the addicted, the oppressed, and the sorrowing, that Mary, who won God's heart by her loving obedience, may now obtain from him the special grace needed by each one, we pray. For our dear deceased brothers and sisters, consecrated to God by the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, that they may be freed from all sin and brought rejoicing into heaven this day, we pray. We pray for the intentions of this Mass, for the repose of the souls of Dominga, Dominga Lita, Robert Stack, and John Tanch. For all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our own hearts, we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in your love and in your mercy for us, you sent your own Son to be born of a virgin to bring us redemption and reconciliation to you. We ask that you could hear and answer these prayers through the same Christ, our Lord. Our song for the presentation of gifts is 
480, Mary's Song, number 480. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, Almighty God, to accept your church's offering so that she who is aware that her beginnings lie in the incarnation of your only begotten Son may rejoice to celebrate his mysteries on this solemnity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the Virgin Mary heard with faith that the Christ was to be born among men and for men's sake, by the overshadowing power of the Holy Spirit, lovingly she bore him in her immaculate womb, that the promises to the children of Israel might come about, and the hope of nations be accomplished beyond all telling. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with dear blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Gabriel, with Saint John Eudes, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Word incarnate, the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our communion hymn is 454, Draw Near and Take the Body of the Lord, number 454.
Let us pray. Confirm in our minds the mysteries of the true faith, we pray, O Lord, so that confessing that he who was conceived of the Virgin Mary is true God and true man, we may, through the saving power of his resurrection, merit to attain eternal joy through Christ our Lord. We're told that Mary is, she's, of course, the mother of Jesus. She's the mother of the church. And so just as her womb, she bore the fruit of her womb, it's Jesus. She brought Christ into the world. So the, the baptism font, that's the womb of the church. And we, when we have entered in to the womb of the baptismal font, we have re been reborn. And so Mary is our spiritual mother as well. And we ask her intercession so that we would continue saying yes to God. Hail Mary. Blessed art thou among women. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. As we go forth, please join in singing. Him 493, the God whom earth and sea and the sky. Number 493. The God whom earth and sea and the sky. 